Hello everybody, welcome back to The Bright Side. I'm your hostess Ty and I'm back here today with more Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony. Last time we left off, we finally figured out that, hey, that video that we see that we saw from Kokichi letting us know that Kaito was the victim, it wasn't really, well, it wasn't completely true. It wasn't doctored in any way, but if you timed it correctly, you could pause both the video and the press at the same time. So we're still working through all of that. And I don't remember what Monokuma was saying, but it's not important. When did you ever say that? So they stopped at the same time. The camera position did seem odd to me. But now I get it. The trick wouldn't work unless it was set up there. Huh? Why? To get the trick we just described to work, the camera had to be set up precisely. Let's pin that down. Where was the camera set up? Well, that's an easy question. This is odd positioning. Um, what is it? Right here. There. That was really weird positioning. The video camera must have been set up somewhere around here to operate the press and the camera at the same time. It would have to be near the switch. That's why the video was taken from that unnatural angle. If they were recording it like normal, they would have used a better angle. And if it was recorded at such an odd angle, then that proves the trick was used. Camry, huh? Looks like your cosplayer experience is finally useful. Well, cosplay doesn't really come up all that much in class trials. There was a reason the camera was set up there, but also a reason for the hype. When the press was stopped, you couldn't really see who was inside it, correct? That was intentional. The body is mostly hidden by the press, making the swap easier. The camera must have been placed at such a high position so it would produce that angle. I wonder if they used that tripod in the hangar to adjust the camera's height. Did they get that from the warehouse too? Jeez, that place is like a 4D pocket. You don't get to make that then, that logic is correct, right? Kokichi used that video angle trick and switched the victim in the hydraulic press. In that case, Kaito is... Before he was crushed by the press, he was swapped with a different body! So Kaito's still alive! Well, wait just a minute. What? But I just summed it up so nicely. Himiko, the different body you mentioned, what are you talking about? The bodies from the other cases. Okichi's the mastermind, so he... Wait, the mastermind? Yeah, Kokichi isn't the mastermind, so... I don't think he'd be able to produce a body to switch out. What? Well, Monokuma, do the rules allow for a body to be reused? Very well. I'll answer that. You're giving in pretty easily. Well, it's crucial information to make the trial fair. This discussion is pointless if it's not clear what the culprit was allowed to do, right? <laughs> You're a convenient mastermind, but I guess that makes defeating you worth my time. Now then, regarding the reuse of a dead body. That is impossible! All the dead bodies have already been thrown away. Thrown away? The other bodies are gone? Then who did Kaido switch places with? K 
Kokichi and Kaito were the only ones in the hangar at that time. If they were the only ones present during the body swapping trick, then the real victim was... Bum bum bum! If it wasn't an old body, it could only be... What's wrong, Shuichi? Who did Kaito switch places with? Maki, I think I missed something very important here. Something important? If I have the timeline right, there were only two people in the hangar at the time. Which means that something had to have been decided before. I have to pin that down. I can't let anything escape me this time. Uh, Hangman's Gambit again? Gosh darn it. Okay, it really took me a second to figure out what the second word was. I'm just like, victim switched, victim swapped, I'm confused, and then it's victim helped. I saw the H and I'm like, H? What do you mean? There were only two people in the hangar at the time the bodies were swapped. Which means they were working together. Huh? Working together? The only two people involved in the swap were the victim and the culprit. The culprit was operating the camera and the hydraulic press while the victim lay inside. They switched places while the press and the camera were stopped. Then the person who turned the camera and the press back on was the original victim. To put it simply, both people operated the press and camera at different times. An impossible trick, unless the victim and culprit agreed to cooperate beforehand. Victim and culprit cooperated? Is that even possible? It sounds bizarre, but perhaps that was the whole point. Commit a crime that was so confusing, even Monokuma would be tricked. Jeez, this culprit's a real jerk. So, have you realized who done it yet? The culprit of the case. My detective work hasn't failed me. The culprit inside that exosol. It can only be them. <laughs> Kai told me, boy. Saw in the video was Kaito, which means. Kichi was operating the hydraulic press and camera at first. If the two of them switched while the press was stopped, then the culprit who started the hydraulic press again and crushed Kokichi must be Kaito. So, the person inside that exosol isn't Kokichi. It has to be Kaito. What did you say? So the culprit for this case is... Kaito.
Kato Momota. That is what the ultimate detective has deduced, right? Kaito is the culprit? What? You're joking, right? You can't be serious. I don't want to believe it either. But it's the only way any of this makes sense. My detective work has led me to the conclusion that Kaito is the culprit. Is that true? Is Kaito really in there? Hey, answer us! If you really are Kaito, then... I'm the culprit. We're not doing this again. There's just no way that Kaito can still be alive. Because I'm the culprit. Wait, you? But didn't you say- I saw it with my own eyes. Kokichi drank the antidote that he stole from Kaito. There's no doubt Kaito died. And he died because of my poison arrow. And you told us you didn't want to kill Kaito and... Yes, I never wanted to. I wanted to believe that I didn't kill him. But... The truth speaks differently. In the end, I was just running away from the facts. Uh, I don't understand. Maki, are you... trying to protect Kaito? If he's the culprit, you're trying to help him get away? There was only one antidote. So it's more likely he died from my poison arrow. This is the truth. It's not decided yet. I could have still killed him with the hydraulic press. Either way, those are the two options. Monokuma knows the answer, right? Huh? Are those the only options? I guess that's how things turned out. No, that can't be. The person in that exosol is... It's not Kaito. I saw Kokichi drink the antidote. There's no mistake. Kaito is dead. I... killed Kaito. There is absolutely no doubt that's the truth. Ah, uh, I thought so. Maki is trying to protect Kaito. I understand how she feels, but if Kaito is the culprit, why did she agree to why did he agree to Kokichi's plan? I can't imagine that Kaito would do something so selfish. There must be a reason for it. I truly believe that. But I have to get to the bottom of this before I can uncover that truth. But Maki. You don't know for certain that Kokichi drank the antidote. What? You saw him drink it right in front of you, but you couldn't confirm he actually did it. So maybe there's another possibility. What are you talking about? Impossible. That's impossible. There is no other possibility. I killed Kaito! Ah, crap. I killed Kaito! You're the one who's wrong. He died from my poison arrow. There's no other possibility. What do you know? I killed Kaito! You're the one who's wrong. He died from my poison arrow. There's no Oh gosh. It doesn't matter what you say. I'm telling you this is the truth. But you keep getting in the way. You're so goddamn annoying. Uh. It doesn't matter what you say. I'm telling you this is the truth. 
was at the scene. So I know I'm not wrong. I'm sorry I kept quiet till now. I wanted to believe I didn't kill him. But I won't run away from the truth anymore. Okay. Because I know what I saw. I was at the scene. So I know I'm not wrong. I'm sorry I kept quiet till now. Oh gosh. I wanted to believe I didn't kill him. But I won't run away from the truth anymore. Because I know what I saw. I was at the scene. So I know I'm not wrong. I'm sorry I kept quiet till now. I wanted to believe I didn't kill him. But I won't run away from him. Uh... I saw Kokichi drink the antidote. It ends here. Goodness gracious. Why is that so difficult? Kokichi just pretended to drink the antidote. He didn't actually drink it. He pretended to drink it? Drinking the antidote was part of his lie. Maki could only see so much through the window. She didn't confirm Kokichi drank it. I believe that Kokichi knew this and just pretended to drink the antidote. After Maki left, he gave the antidote to Kaito. There's a strong possibility that all of this was done to make Kaito cooperate. To make him cooperate? The swapping trick required the victim and culprit to work together. Kaito's cooperation was essential to Kokichi's plan. However, I don't think Kokichi would be able to sway Kaito easily. He needed leverage. He gave in exchange for his own life, you mean. That was an accident. Uh he needed leverage. He gave Kaito the answer in exchange for his cooperation. Duh. <laughs> Kaito had no choice. He had to cooperate after Kokichi saved his life. That's just Kaito's character. And Kokichi knew that. He swallowed his pride with the antidote and agreed to participate in Kokichi's plan. Didn't Kokichi make this plan? What good is it for him if he's dead? I imagine this was all part of Kokichi's plan to confuse us. You wouldn't think that someone would plan their own murder. He went so far as to give up his life just to create this mystery? Only Kokichi could think of something so nefarious. Who else would agree to die just to execute their plan? Why would he go that far? I bet Kokichi was determined to beat me at my own game, no matter. What? But too bad! Shuichi figured out the truth! Are you sure it's not delusion? Delusion? A delusion completely off the mark. To make you think that I die. But who cares what you guys think? This is between me and Monokuma. I don't give a crap if the extras in this game get it right or not. I'm fine with being an extra. Fun fact, but I hit that button by accident and I forgot I could do that. Huh? Why? If we're just extras, then even if we get it wrong, we won't get killed. No, I'd still kill you all. Don't put Kokichi's words in my mouth. I don't know why she even thought that. Monokuma gets it right, then he takes everyone's lives, yeah? But if Monokuma gets it wrong, then he'd have no right to take everyone's lives. If Monokuma doesn't know who the culprit is, then this killing game can't function anymore. I don't know about that, but it can't function anymore? If 
you're cooperating with this plan, you must have a reason. To determine that reason, I need to reveal the truth. I still think Kaito is the culprit. Thinking of it that way makes all the pieces fit. I will show you the truth. The truth you can't deny. Closing argument time. All right, what I got? Um. What is this? After receiving the item from Paving Co., the culprit. Oh. Hit the Exosol. Trail of blood. The only antidote. Okay. She hit the Exosol. Electrobomb. Oh. An Exosol inside the hangar. We opened the shutter and got inside the hangar. Let me make sure. Yeah. Okay. This should be next, I think. Yep, only antidote. Trail of blood. Electro bomb. Yep. Culprit leave in the bathroom to make the trail of blood. Now I got this. This. Assembling the crossbow should be here. Yeah. And this one is the culprit in the press, and that one up there is Kokichi in the press. So, gotta go all the way down here. The culprit was in the press first. Then, after that, Kokichi. Get these clothes flush down the toilet is that last? Yes. Kokichi's back. I know where that one goes. Let me find this one first. The three arrows. Second arrow should be yep. No, this one should be Kokichi's back. And this one is his right arm. Boom! This is the truth of the case! Let's go over the trick that Kokichi and the culprit created together. Last night, Kibo saw Himiko from the window of his lab. She was carrying a black case and heading to the Exosol hangar. When she reached the hangar, she handed the case to someone through the bathroom window. That someone is the culprit of this case. Locked in the bathroom, the culprit had asked Himiko to bring them a certain weapon. A disassembled crossbow from Maki's lab. The culprit was going to use the crossbow to challenge Kokichi to a fight. Some time passed, and Maki made her way to the hangar. She was going to the hangar to kill Kokichi and save the culprit trapped in the bathroom. However, the hangar had an electric barrier preventing her from entering. Fortunately for her, she had an electro hammer to get around the barrier, in a way. Ah. 
she used her electro hammer to disable an exosol and climbed inside. She knew exosols could bypass the barrier, so she got inside one. Around that time, the culprit and Kokichi began their confrontation. While Kokichi was checking up on them, the culprit ambushed him with a crossbow. But the culprit didn't intend to kill Kokichi. They just wanted to disable him. That's why the culprit aimed for Kokichi's right arm. If they really wanted to kill him, they would have shot him in his vitals. Kokichi reeled from the arrow, and the culprit jumped on him immediately. He didn't want Kokichi to have the chance to summon an exosol with a remote. While they were fighting, something happened that caught them both off guard. The shutter of the hangar opened, and an exosol stepped inside. Kokichi was definitely not expecting an exosol to interrupt them. He pulled out his remote in an attempt to control the exosol. But Maki leaped out of the cockpit and shot Kokichi with her crossbow. The arrow hit Kokichi right in the back, and it was no normal arrow. The tip was covered in a lethal poison from my lab called Strike 9 Poison. The poison kills slowly. It seems as if Maki wanted Kokichi to confess before he died. But even with poison in his veins, Kokichi continued to spin his lies. When she had had enough, Maki tried to finish him off with another poisoned arrow. But this time, Maki was the one caught by surprise. To keep Maki from becoming the Blackened, the culprit used their body to shield Kokichi. The culprit's left arm was struck by a poison arrow. Maki remembered that there was an antidote in my lap, and immediately ran off to get it. The Strike 9 poison slowly circulated through their systems, and would soon kill them both. But in that desperate situation, Kokichi thought up a clever lie. He incorporated this unforeseen event into his plan to help him win the killing game. Or should I say, help him defeat Monokuma. That was Kokichi's true objective. It's why he claimed to be the mastermind. Thinking fast, Kokichi closed the shutter so that Maki could not re-enter the hangar. Thus, Kokichi's final lie was set into motion. When Maki returned with the antidote, she couldn't get back inside the hangar. So she went around to the hangar bathroom and passed the antidote through the window. But after the culprit was given the antidote, Kokichi immediately snatched it. Kokichi drank down all of the antidote while the culprit and Maki watched in horror. Maki must have been panicking, thinking the only antidote was now gone. She believed that the culprit was going to die from her own poisoned arrow. But it was all another one of Kokichi's lies. He had only pretended to drink the antidote. Maki tried desperately to break into the hangar, even slashing the control panel. But she couldn't get the shutter to open again. Defeated, she had no choice but to leave. After Maki had left, Kokichi took out another weapon. An electrobomb capable of disabling communication devices for hours. Kokichi's plan 
was to use an electrobomb to knock out Monokuma's surveillance cameras. That was why he commissioned Mew to make the bombs in the first place. After detonating an electrobomb, Kokichi coerced the culprit into drinking the antidote. In exchange for the antidote, Kokichi asked the culprit to cooperate with his plan. Kokichi needed to work with the culprit to execute his final lie. Under normal circumstances, the culprit would never have agreed to such a plan. But because the culprit owed him for saving their life, they agreed to Kokichi's request. Ah, request is a generous term. It was more like blackmail. In any case, the two were now working together as accomplices in an insane plan. There was a lot to prepare and not a lot of time. They had to work fast. If Kokichi died from the Strike 9 poison, the whole plan would be ruined. After fabricating the scene in the bathroom, the culprit dragged Kokichi to the hydraulic press. This is how the swipe pattern bloodstain from the bathroom to the press was created. Kokichi, with the support of the culprit, stood in front of the press's control panel. The two of them were finally ready to execute the insane lie. While Kokichi was setting up the video camera near the hydraulic press's control panel, the culprit laid face up inside the press, draping their coat over their shoulders. Then, Kokichi activated the press and the camera's record button at the same time. The hydraulic press came down slowly, all caught on tape for us to see. Normally, the safety function would have triggered, but the electrobomb had disabled it. The press got lower and lower, and just as the culprit disappeared from view, Kokichi pressed the force stop button and the camera's pause button simultaneously. The two then switched places and also switched roles. The culprit and the victim. The would-be victim became our culprit and started up the press and camera. Kokichi had saved the culprit's life because his trick required their cooperation. He wanted to win the killing game, even if it meant dying himself. And so, Kokichi was crushed by the press, and the whole thing was caught on video. The culprit's left sleeve was dangling from the press, making us think he was the victim. Now alone, the culprit collected the video camera and tore the hydraulic press's power cord so that it could never be raised again. This would make it impossible for us to determine the identity of the crushed body. But there was another reason the victim was killed in this way. It obfuscated the cause of death, making the case that much more difficult to solve. This was all part of Kokichi's plan to create a murder not even Monokuma could figure out. With the press disabled, the culprit returned to the bathroom to flush Kokichi's clothes. Finally, they climbed inside of an exosol to hide and waited with bated breath. And here they are now in this trial, pretending to be Kokichi. They're trying to deceive Monokuma in order to defeat the true mastermind. And that's it. That's Kokichi's unidentified culprit trick.
The culprit is in that Exosol. It's you, isn't it? Kaito Momota, the ultimate astronaut. I'm right, aren't I? That's you in there, isn't it, Kaito? Really? Is it really, Kaito? Unfortunately, we're going to have to find out next time because that was a very long, drawn-out explanation. I mean, it's a very elaborate trick, so it took a while to figure out, but man, that took forever. So, we're going to find out if it really is Kaito in the next episode. So, like always, I want to thank you guys for joining me here today. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that notification bell to so be notified of all future content updates, including more Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, Apex Legends over on my Twitch channel on Sundays, and once all this is over, Indivisible and more Catherine Full Body. <laughs> like always, I'd like to thank you guys for joining me here today, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!